Good evening, everyone. It's Wednesday, 9 p.m. Brazil time, and it's time for class. It's time for Fluent for Real Life. If you don't know me, I am Renata. I am an English teacher. I have been for the past 15 years, and I am here to take your English from okay to the English that your career demands, the English that only 2% of Brazilians actually speak. Welcome to class. I'm going to welcome my partner, MC. If you don't know her, she's all the way, she's uh, speaking all the way from Canada, where she works. And we're going to have a great chat about the do's and don'ts of fluent English. If you want to reach that English, this is the class for you. We have great tips to give you and help you get there. Hi, Gabi. Hi, Gabriela, our dear student, our gold digger, Krisha Antonella. Let's welcome MC in. Hi, Marco Polo. Hi, Paula. Junior. Welcome, guys. Hi, partner. Hey, partner. How are you doing today? I'm good, and you? I'm good. And hello, everyone. And partner, thank you for introducing me. And like Renata was saying, I'm just like you. <laughs> maybe you now, maybe you in the future. Maybe that person who is struggling or will struggle with English in the workplace. Yes, and we are here today to talk about the five do's and don'ts of fluent English. Um, I have to kick this class off by saying that um, we are thinking everything that I am about to tell you is based on uh, the idea that you or anyone who wants to reach the English that we call fluent, that we, uh, MC and I, um, think that is the English of real life, the English that actually meets your demands, especially the ones at work. And that's what, what we are here for. We are here, as I said at the beginning, to help you get from, you know, go from that okay English to the English that your professional life demands from you, that your success demands from you. So we're going to repeat that every now and then. Because the recommendations and the do's and the don'ts that we have to share with you tonight are all related to that. You can learn English just to travel. I mean, just, not just, as just, because it's a lot. I mean, if you have a specific goal, I want to travel. I want to speak English to communicate with family members. My daughter is married to an, to an American so there are so many goals you have no idea. Like people have very, very specific demands and goals with English. So we are going to think of this specific goal, right? So hi, hi, Chad, our American friend. I'm already considering Canadian. him my friend. Canadian. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Canadian <laughs> friend. I'm already considering you, Chad, my friend, right? So hi, Jihle, Denise, Denise, our student. Hi, Jassad, our student too. Hi, Junior. Welcome, guys. Um, All gold so, diggers. Yes. The class today is um, about, let's see here. Okay, five topics. Because once again, I cannot see the little button to add images. I will try to, yeah, it's still a little bugged. Zuckerberg decides when he wants to do it and when he does not want to do it. So I'm going to do just like, the, just like I did last week. Hi, B, hi B, my cousin, uh, Marcel. I'm going to... Uh, grab the phone and show the pictures in the computer because that's how we roll with our plan A and our plan B. So let's go. Don't number one. And I want to I wanna invite you to bear with me because you might feel a little bit shocked, you know, with the things that I'm about to tell you. But uh, take it easy. I am going to explain everything and I'm going to explain exactly what I mean by each of them, all right? And if any of you have any contact with Mr. Zuckerberg, the owner of this app, can you please tell him that there's always a bug and I, I can never get to, you know, recently for the last month, he's been giving me a hard time. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's get started. Hi, Amanda. So... Number one. He doesn't go live, that's why. So he doesn't yeah. know the struggle. You need to actually go to the gamba, feel the pain. Yes. Hi, Carol. Oh, our students are on point with our live lessons. Gold too. diggers. They besides, have a reason yeah, to do so. Besides all the stuff that they already have to do, they're here. Proud of you guys. Okay, so number one, do's and don'ts of 
fluent English using translation. The training wheel effect. Um, the training wheel effect. You know these little, if you guys know these little wheels here for kids, they are called training wheels. This is don't number one. Why is it don't number one? Why do I consider that it is? Um, we are thinking about fluent English, aren't we? If you used Portuguese to learn the language, it's very hard for you to reach a certain point and stop using it and just get rid of it. I, I like to tell to compare with uh, my nephew who is three years old and he can already ride. You know, have you ever seen those little bikes MC? I don't know if the, the kids do that in Canada, but they have those in Canada. Um, it's like there's Scooter. no pedal. No, it's a bike bike, but there's no pedal. They have to drag, you know, use their little feet to, to get, the, the, to get the, the bike going. Have you ever seen that? No, and I don't have a kid, so I don't know that vocabulary <laughs> yet. <laughs> so in it Brazil, happened. I didn't know that either. And, you know, my nephew has one of those. And even though he is three, he can already, he, he already learned how to balance himself on top of the bike without any help. So from there to an actual bike with pedals, you know, like pushing himself by himself. Um, from there, it's going to be this. It, you know, it won't take much. While, on the other hand, yeah, Patrícia is saying that it's common in Brazil. On the other hand, when you learn how to ride a bike with training wheels, let's get the, the training wheels back here. With the training wheels, oh God, it's so scary to get rid of them. It's so traumatic to get rid of them. It's like that Ross Phoebe scene. You know, don't, That's don't how leave I learned me. Too. I remember don't that. let me go. Don't let me go. So, yeah, it's very traumatic. So, um, leave it in the comments here. How many of you... Uh, is it a scooter too, Chad? But it, it's not like the one where you stand up. It's a bike. You're sitting down. So, okay. Um, guys, leave it in yeah. the comments if... You use translation to study. When you study, if you make notes in Portuguese, if you are studying, learning a new word, and you go to the English Portuguese dictionary, you know, be honest. Be honest in the comments. Um, and whether or not you believe that thinking in Portuguese is a problem for you to speak because you are thinking in Portuguese and you just, the words won't come out you know, of your mouth. MC, do you, how do you feel about this translation thing? I know, and I and you, you know, we have a, a history with English, English, studying English and not uh, using Portuguese to learn as learners. That's what we believe. But what is your opinion on that, on like translation as an obstacle? So it feels it feels uncomfortable uh, when you're trying to to learn English without translation, but at the same time, it's just that much faster to learn, and you get used to the um, to the not rule or activity. You're ju you just get used to thinking and asking for an English explanation, just like you would do if you're searching for a, a word that you don't know in Portuguese. Let's say look it up on the dict dictionary or something like that. Google that. Mm -hmm. um so but what was your question I, I was mentioning that before but it was not yeah exactly like your, your experience question. you know with with brazilian speakers there in canada maybe that um you you know that they they struggle because of the the portuguese that won't come out you know that will so the thing stay. the thing that i i hear the most is actually people are so used to communicate in a, in a certain way in portuguese it's not an accurate translation just a, just a matter of changing words if you're trying to to communicate and send out the same message message in English, so if you if you stick to the Portuguese version in your head, all you're gonna do is actually not communicate in the way that native speakers or even other nationalities would understand right away. So they they're always trying to pause, think, oh, that's what she meant, or or that's what she means, or something like that. So it kind of creates. Uh, a slow pace in the communication uh, when you're trying to do that. And often you're just going to, I hear that all the time and it's kind of annoying. Um, so I have other, other, other Brazilians with me and, and in the same meeting and the, the meeting is in English and then they're going to be like, what is that word again? And then they just throw out a word in Portuguese and all of a sudden you're like, 
oh, okay, but what, what do you mean? Because <laughs> I, I don't even understand how you're going to fit that word in the context that you're giving here. So mm-hmm. it's it's uncomfortable and, and it's it's not a good strategy. And you can, it's hard to to get away from that place and kind of get rid of that uh, habit. So it's not a good habit for you to have. Yeah. And um, so translation is, in our opinion, if you are aiming at very, you know, the 2% English, fluent English, it's going to be a barrier. It's going to be your training wheel. Getting rid of that will be harder for you. Um, but it's not impossible. So let's do it. Let's do this. I have some, some tips for you to where to stop using Portuguese. And uh, Denise, our student, said that not anymore since she became a gold digger which is the nickname that we give our students. Only the Cambridge Dictionary when I don't know the word. Great. Cam- Cam- Cambridge Dictionary is one of my favorites too. It actually became one of my favorites. And I started using it more uh, recently. And it's one of my favorites today. So here we have the don'ts. Don't write definitions in Portuguese. Don't. If you want to learn a new word, go to the dictionary and get the definition in English. When we read the definition in English, we learn the, the, the definition and we are already expanding our, our vocabulary naturally. Maybe the synonym that they use to explain the word is a new word for you, but a new word that you can understand, maybe because it is Latin rooted. So you're learning two words and not only one. Another don't, don't translate expressions, don't, don't. Oh, MC, you, you, have, you, you probably have a zillion stories uh, related to translating idiomatic expressions in, from Portuguese to English. And it is one embarrassment after the other because it, you, you can get lucky, you can. You can get lucky and try to translate something and get close or even, you know, hit the jackpot. However... You're playing with your odds there. It's risky. And you know what? I'm lucky as well because I live in Canada and Canadians are usually like really, really nice. (laughs) Uh, Living in in the United States, I I, I definitely had not the same experience. Um, So, for example, I I remember this and I've never told that story uh, before in Fluent For Real. Um, I had to say the word lubrication. I was in an operational environment, okay? Uh, A car manufacturer. And then I ended up saying lubrification (laughs) and my coach right away, he understood (laughs) what I meant, but he made fun of me for solid two minutes because of that. (laughs) He was like, come again. What did you say? What do you mean? And then I'm like, come on. It's not that different. Just correct me. And (laughs) no, he made fun of me. Told, t- he told the, that story to other um, a few other co-workers as well. But anyway, so yeah, <laughs> lubrication, people, not lubrification, okay? <laughs> oh, and that word specifically, you know, it's like, oh, God, really? Okay, so, you know, um, Master said that he used Cambridge Dictionary, but sometimes he doesn't understand it, uh, the word very well. So it, besides the dictionary, you can, you can get another dictionary. I like the Cambridge, beca- the Cambridge one because they give a lot of sentences that they get it's from, simple, yeah. from like real texts, real books. But what you can also do is Google uh, in the news, try to find news articles where that word is used to see not only one sentence, but maybe a paragraph and try to understand how that word is used so that's it. I also also when I'm, I'm in a hurry or something like that, what I do is actually I Google the world, then I Google uh, synonyms, uh, and then right away I I see similar words, you know. And yeah, where that, that helps. where it's going, right? Okay, all right. So there we have. Um, okay, let me see here. Oh, Antonella remembers the alcohol gels, the, the al- alcohol story versus hand sanitizer. I was actually going to ask MC to tell that story. Now you have to tell that story, MC. Okay. Actually, so... wait a minute. Let me just remember if uh, I am supposed to uh, to ask you to tell that story now or a little later. Uh, we can yeah, tell it now and then later. we can skip it. Okay, so, so go, 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 tell it. Yeah, so for example, I came back from Brazil and I was sharing a story. So... 
right after I come back from Brazil and on Mondays, my English gets re gets really rusty for some reason. Maybe because <laughs> during the weekend I speak a lot of Portuguese here with my significant other. And also um, because when I come back from Brazil, mainly I, I spoke, uh, I was speaking uh, Portuguese. And I was sharing a story with a group of coworkers and a group of peers, and I was letting them know that, um, but I, I was feeling a little anxious, COVID times and et cetera. And I, I was rubbing kind of alcohol in my hands. I had alcohol in my hands all the time. <laughs> And then I noticed that a few people were like camera on and trying to hold their smile and kind of hmm, that doesn't feel so bad or doesn't seem so bad. And then I'm like, oh, man, okay. Party in Brazil. Yeah, I forgot about hand sanitizer because the word in Portuguese that we use is alcohol kind of thing. It's the same, right? I'm going to rub alcohol in my hands. But in, in English, it's actually hand sanitizer. <laughs> oh, yeah and but anyway uh, i'm i'm already used to being embarrassed yeah i would li just like to add something um the the fact that we are bilingual this will always always be um um i don't know it's it's always going to be there you know it's like english is on one side portuguese is on the other side and it's okay we are bilingual people you know proud of being bilingual sure there is no shame in doing what MC did, coming back from Brazil and confusing a word. Even if, even if you hadn't come back from Brazil, it's okay. You know, our brain works from two different sources and sometimes they will get mixed up. It's fine. It just shouldn't happen 50% of the time. It can happen 10% of the time, you know? 90% of the time, you don't, that doesn't happen. But every now and then, of course. It can happen. And also on top of that, you need to remember that I was the one realizing that I made the mistake. So this is a big win when you're learning English or practicing English or improving your English. Nobody actually told me. I just realized uh, they gave me kind of a hint. Hey, by the way, <laughs> I'm trying to laugh here. So then it triggered me like to think about it. Oh, okay. <laughs> what did I say? What did I say? Oh, I made a mistake. That's usually how it goes. Um, so it, it's a great thing if you're actually being able to recognize and understand and acknowledge your own mistakes, you're in a good path. Yeah, that's you're true. You're in a good path, fella. Very true. It's the awareness path that we talk about so much here at Fluent For Real. Um, next one here then, translating texts. Don't do that. Don't translate. Oh, I'm reading something. I'm going to translate it to Portuguese to understand. No, make an effort. Go to English. Uh, don't ask, how can I say that in Portuguese? Not to the teacher, not to your friend, not to yourself. Again, we're talking of... about habits here, okay? Yes. So it, it, the interest here is it, it's not forbidden and it's not going to, oh my God, you're the worst human being in the world because you do <laughs> that. Um, we're talking about a habit here. It's easy for you to go down that road and not come back. True. Very well put. Um, and don't take notes in Portuguese. Don't take notes of anything that you are learning in Portuguese. Your own notebook should be written in English. All right. So the, the don'ts, these are tips of moments where you may not even realize that you are exercising your Portuguese instead of your English. So exercise your English in these situations as well. How about moving on to the second point of the evening and I only have one hand to do everything okay got it got it got got, got it okay okay there we have it number two do's and don'ts of fluent English watching Netflix what Renata are you crazy I'm leaving this live lesson I'm leaving I am out of here what do you mean by that hold your horses What do I mean by watching Netflix? I mean that watching Netflix or watching anything else. Netflix is, of course, one example of a big source, an important source of uh, film series and so on. Okay. Now, watching TV shows, listening to music, watching series, films, etc. Getting that input and not systematizing that information transforming that into information into knowledge 
is not going to change your English. It's going to practice your listening if you are, if you are pushing yourself to the limit, if you are watching the, 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 the series, let's say, oh, I can understand, I kind of understand, I need the subtitles, but still the subtitles are challenging for me. Great, do it. You just got to push yourself out of your comfort zone, not down the hill. <laughs> so, or if no, I think I can challenge myself to a little more. So I, I, I'm not going to use subtitles, no captions, nothing. No subtitles in English or Portuguese. Of course, never Portuguese. But so, you know, that is, is, is helping your listening. Great, but not your speaking, not necessarily expanding your vocabulary. In a, in, a, in, in a productive way, in an intelligent and productive way. If you just listen, you may need to listen to that same word many, many, many times until you finally remember to use it. If you systematize what you are doing, uh, you will get that word, pick it up from the movie, from the series, and transform that into knowledge fast. So if you think, oh, I am studying English, I am keeping up with my, my, you know, keeping my English or uh, evolving and learning and growing just by watching, you're not. You're watching to have fun, to relax, to forget about life, forget about your troubles. You need to study uh, what you're watching. So instead of watching one whole movie, two hours, why not get 10, 15 minutes of your favorite TV show uh, and watch, you know, 10, 15 minutes studying that studying and systematizing. Um, if you don't believe me, just think about it. How many hours, uh, the, the average Brazilian spends one hour on Netflix a day. There are 17 million Brazilian clients, Netflix clients in Brazil. That would add up to, you know, a lot of people speaking English just because they're watching Netflix. And We wouldn't have the 2% or 5%. Yes, we would have many more people speaking, speaking English. So it's not just about the practice. You are not a pilot, even though a taxi driver is not a pilot, even though he drives eight hours a day. You got to be training for that. You know, I want to drive and I want to uh, develop a certain skill. I want to drive on this specific, I don't know, well, this specific curve, you know, this specific weather in this specific car. So you got to train for that. It's not about watching. And why am I saying that? Because I don't want you to waste your time. I know you're busy. I know you have already studied English. You're not beginning. You have gone through classes, maybe schools, maybe, you know, online classes. I don't know what. But I know that you are busy and you are not prepared. You're not willing to waste time. So let's make every minute count. Make every minute count. Watch 10 minutes, but make those 10 minutes count for you. Pick the words you want. We can talk about that maybe on another day because uh, I think it, I, ha I would have a lot of instructions and, and tips to give you uh, in terms of how you can self-study. But just, you know, just don't think that that's going to perform a miracle in your English and that's going to be enough. You got to switch it into something more systematic and something more organized and something more strategized mc do you have anything to add to that i'm going to read the comments not really just that it's uh i'm going to be your timekeeper and okay. it's 7 30 already okay um so number three then let's move on to number three okay watching netflix okay just one thing about watching netflix it's not about watching That's all I have to say. Number three, then. The three don't of fluent English. Number three, too many classes. Do's and don'ts of fluent English. Remember, fluent English, the English that only very few people speak at work, especially. We are aiming at you guys who need to speak English at work. Um, too many classes, which means... I watch, I go to YouTube, I come here, I watch Fluent For Real, um, and I go to a zillion other, you know, sources of explanations, grammar. I am listening to many teachers or to my teacher many hours a day, but that's all I do. 
You have to go full cycle. It's just like learning how to cook. If you only watch Rita Lobo on TV, that doesn't make you a chef. <laughs> you gotta give it a try. You gotta get Rita's recipe. You gotta go into the kitchen. You gotta try it. You gotta cook. And then you gotta eat to see if what you cooked is good, is delicious or not. So you need to learn. You need the input. You need to practice. Exercise what you learned. Try to cook. And then you need the feedback. I need to know if I am on the right path, if I am on the right track. So just watching class, and I've seen this so many times. Students come to class, watch class, go home, and they just forget everything that they learned because they didn't practice. They didn't force themselves to put that into practice and action. So it's the, old, the oldest cliche in the world of homework of practice, of exposing yourself to practice speaking English, using what you learned. But it is, it is what it is. So not completing the cycle is wasting time, is equals to, is equal to wasting time. Because let's remember, every minute counts. If you are watching two hours of class, but not exercising what you learned, you're wasting time because you're not going to learn what you studied. You need to get the input, practice, and get the feedback. That's how you actually learn, okay? So complete your cycles, even if it means not watching as many classes as you would like, not getting as, ma as much input as you would like. You need to get input, practice, and then get the feedback. Uh, let's see if anyone, okay. Oh, Mas, you had to leave. Oh, that's okay, Mas. You will, you will be able to watch the class tomorrow. I mean, right after. Right after we finish. Number four of the don'ts, of the do's and don'ts. Mixing up, recognizing with recalling. This is something important for those. Do you guys think this? I understand, but I can't speak. Have you ever said that? Do you feel that? I, I hear understand. that all the time. I Me understand too. everything, but I, I cannot speak the same way or something like that. So, yeah. I, I think that must be the number one thing that I hear as a teacher. Hi, Anata. Oh, nice to meet you. Oh, so are you an English, te an English teacher? Okay, good. I speak English. Yeah, I kind of speak English. Yeah, I, but I understand everything, but I can't speak. That's what I hear the most. And, it's and a as shame. I was learning, as I was learning, uh, I remember reading and, and trying to understand and, and check if, if I was understanding everything. Ooh, I nailed it. Mm -hmm. My listening, depending on, on the speed and if I'm going to have, if it was paused or something like that, I wasn't so good. Uh, but then speaking is another game. Mm -hmm. A whole different game. Honey, Gianni, raise her hand. <laughs> Hi, Isabella. Welcome. Welcome. So mixing up, recognizing with recalling. When you recognize English, which means you read, you understand. You listen, you understand That is completely different from recalling, which means you are, are accessing the information that you learned and using it. Those two, those two, two things are absolutely different. Um, and then you get to the snowman effect. Oh, I learned, I got, I absorbed a lot, but I don't use it. So the passive knowledge is way, way, way bigger than the active We should try to make the snowman a little more, a little more balanced, okay? So the, the, tubby, the, the tummy must be smaller and the head bigger to balance what you understand what, and what is active knowledge, the stuff that you actually put out, you write, you say. So how can we do that? I would suggest um, that one thing that I suggest I, I, it's not that I suggest. I just want you to keep an eye on what ability the exercises that you are doing are requiring from you. Most of the apps to learn vocabulary, you know, to, to usually vocabulary, um, they offer multiple choice exercises, for example. Multiple choice means recognizing. I know which one is right, which one is wrong. But I don't necessarily have to remember the word or remember the information. An app that asks, asks for recalling, that would be more challenging. I'm not saying you can't do 
the multiple choice uh, exercises too. You can. They are great for a first moment, but you can't stop there. Otherwise, it's going to be one of those like um, one of those moments where you go, oh, um, uh, wait, one thing here. Okay, <laughs> it's it's going to be. Yeah, got, I got got a little distracted here. It's going to be, you know, like, um, uh, uh, you know, Renat, I go to the grammar book or I go to, to my apps and I do all the exercises. I get 100%. My score is 100%, but I still can't speak. That's why you have to be able to recall the information, not only recognize it. So keep an eye on that. Um, if you want more tips on how to do that, leave it in the comments. I would be happy to get deeper into that topic. Let's go to number five because our time is almost up already. And this, guys, is for you. All, after all this information, this is for you guys to chill, to calm down. Thinking Take the chill pill. <laughs> Take the chill pill. Pray. Thinking, uh, Denise said that she feels like this. So, Denise, don't. Let's change that, right? Little by little, we are changing that. And number five, Denise, that goes for you too. I think it's, it's going to help you. Thinking too far ahead can be a great obstacle, can be a barrier, can, be, can get in your way. Don't think about what you don't know, how many things you still have to learn to reach the fluency that you want. Think about the next step you need to take. All I need is one step. After that one step, I will take another one. So I'm going to fix my pronunciation problem with this specific sound. I'm going to fix my, my problem with um, the simple present that I always mix up with present continuous. Fix that problem. Take one step at a time. Don't only think about what you don't know and how far it is. That's going to be overwhelming and that's going to maybe push you back and, and get you frustrated and get you discouraged. So think about your next step, one step at a time, and you will get there. Trust me, it's not fast, but it's there. And celebrate your victories. Take one step at a time, celebrate every victory, because after all, you guys are bilingual. Remember that. Bilingual people, you guys speak Portuguese and you guys speak English. Maybe not the English that you would like to speak. You want more. Amazing. Good for you. Good. And not everyone has that kind of ambition, you know, and is aiming at their future. So, you know, first of all, congratulations. That, that, that would be like um, the even I would say some the first thing I would say is congratulations. And then celebrate your victories, guys. Celebrate your victories because... Um, it will keep you going, all right? And I hope that these five tips were helpful to make your time worth it. Every minute will count. If you strategize and use your time uh, in a more productive way, thinking about the end goal. What's the end goal? Fluent English, the English that your career demands, the English that 2% of Brazilians speak. That's what we are here for to help you get there right mc correct agree 100 <laughs> percent. so guys thank you so much leave any questions any comments i saw here that uh, someone asked about an app to improve speech i do have some tips on apps to to uh, improve pronunciation you know and and conversation i can give you guys that hint later on stories that tip But I would like to thank you guys for staying here with us tonight. Send your suggestions. Maybe next week you can pick the topic of the class. We are always asking you guys for suggestions. So send them in story, in the comments, DM, however you prefer. Have a great evening, everyone. Have a good night. And I will see you guys. We will see you guys next Wednesday at 9 p.m. Brazil time as usual, as always. We are always here on Wednesdays, 9 p.m. Brazil time right? I'll see you then at 7 Eastern time. <laughs> Eastern time Thank for you, partner. Brazil Thank time for, for me. Yep, Thank yep, you. Yep. Thank you, and partner. I hope you loved it. I hope you enjoyed it and put it in practice. Bye-bye.
Bye, 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 bye. Bye, gold diggers.